Hello everyone and welcome to Southern Soul. I'm your host Tony Morris and I gotta tell you I feel like I am floating on cloud nine and the reason being is this is the love is all around episode of Southern Soul. Valentine's Day is approaching and I thought why don't we focus on love? That's right we're gonna be spreading the love. We're gonna be spreading it on thick. Somebody actually asked me and said, you know, hey Tony, you know, Valentine's Day, why don't you dress up like Cupid? And I thought about it for like a half a second, and I said, I don't think so. So don't be expecting to see any wings on this guy, at least today. Now, like I said, this is the Love is All Around episode. Now, one of the things that, you know, when it comes to love, there's so many different aspects of love. Relationships, romance. So we're gonna, we're gonna cover a lot of that today. One of the things I love about this show is I get to take questions from you. So why don't we take a few questions right now? So I've got the questions. Uh, the first question is, I've tried to communicate spiritually with my late husband, but haven't connected yet. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I know we all have loved ones who have made their transition and we still want to be open, have the communication lines open. And that's very possible. That's very possible to happen. Uh, first of all, be open to it. That's, a, that's number one. Second of all, believe that it will happen. But what I'm going to suggest is don't be so concerned about the way in which it will happen. Meaning, like, don't feel like you're actually going to hear something in your head. Spirits will communicate with us in a number of different ways. They are notorious for providing signs. You know, it could be something that you see on the street while you're walking. Um, it could be uh, hearing a song on the radio that reminds you of that person. So don't, what, what I'm getting at is don't be so specific as to the ways in which a spirit will communicate with you, but be open to it and when you do recognize those signs, be grateful to the universe, ask for continued conversations with that person or that, that loved one, and I guarantee you're, you'll, you'll have more experiences like that. Happens to me all the time. Okay, second question. What's the future of the New Thought Movement? <laughs> well, I gotta, I, I'm laughing a little bit because I don't really see it as New Thought. I really consider it to be ancient wisdoms. And what I believe is happening, and it's been happening now for a while, more and more people are tapping into it. They're realizing that spirituality is not some hocus pocus, that it's not some kind of newfangled approach, that it's really about the core, the genuine core of tapping into what is real, what is godlike, what is good in this world. And so I feel like more and more people are going to be doing it. And what's going to happen as a result, the positive vibration of this planet will benefit greatly. So stay tuned. So let's take that third question. Are there certain foods that help a person to be more intuitive? Absolutely. But you wouldn't want any of my cooking. Uh, <laughs> Among the suggestions that I would, I would you know, tell people, greens. You've, some of you may have heard the term power greens. Well, there's a lot to be said about power greens. I'm talking about kale, spinach, um, broccoli. These power greens really help open up our vibrational pathways. Same goes for fresh fruit. Now, I'm not a big fruit eater. I just never have been, but I love fruit juices. So I keep um, pineapple juice, orange juice, and grape juice in my refrigerator. Now there are foods that you should also avoid, if possible, to help you with your intuition. Uh, heavily processed foods. If you have a diet of heavily processed foods, it's probably going to clog up your, vib your vibrational frequencies. Uh, and way too much sugar. You want to avoid way too much sugar because that can hinder your intuition as well, okay? So thank you for those questions. As you can tell, I'm still on cloud nine because this is the love show. Um, 
By the way, does this cloud make me look poofy? Just asking. Now, being, you know, this being the love show, it, we should probably talk about love, right? Now, here's a fact. If you're getting married and you're going to plan a big wedding, uh, there's certain locations that are far more popular than others. And according to the sources on the internet, uh, the top three, among the top three, are Hawaii for a wedding, San Francisco for a wedding, and Viva Las Vegas. Now, for some of us, uh, before we start planning the wedding, we want to attract the ideal mate, right? The ideal person, that romantic interest. So, I've heard the phrase, I'm sure you have too, the way to someone's heart is often through their stomach. So, join me on a very special dinner date, a dinner date with myself, to where we're going to talk about how to manifest that romantic interest in our lives. Hey, welcome to the dinner date. Me and whoever may show up. You know, one of the big questions that a lot of my psychic clients uh, ask me is, especially when it re relates to romance, is, Tony, how do I go about attracting the right person in my life, the right romantic figure in my life? It's a big question. So today, I'm going to be the love guru, and we're going to talk about love, and we're going to talk about how to attract those right people in your life. One of the things that I always suggest to people is you take a piece of paper and you actually write down the different attributes that you'd like to have your soulmate or your romantic, romantic interest have. Now, you know, these can range from, uh, do they, are they a, an emotional person? Are they a funny person? Do they, do they have a sense of humor? They make you laugh. Uh, are they spiritual? You know, are they in touch with their inner self? And of course, you know, you'll probably want to throw in some phys physical uh, attributes as well. And you just write those down and visualize the kind of person that you're wanting to attract. And you might be surprised who may show up at your dinner table. Like this one. Or that one. Or how about this one? I'm not too sure about that one, though. Okay, but I think you get the picture. Do a little bit of role playing. Have some fun with it. Don't be so stressed out about when's that person going to come. And you've got to do some of the work. You've got to do some of the engineering, say. So write down those list of attributes and, and believe in them. Believe that, that they will manifest and they will come into your life. Now, before you do all of that work, there's, there's some prep work that you still need to do. So that, yeah, you'll do that work when the time's right, but before you do that kind of role-playing work and design a date, <laughs> there's some, some simple steps that you need to take charge of first. Number one, love yourself. I can't stress that enough. Um, I've had clients that will be like, Oh, I don't have anything going for myself. I just can't stand the way. How can you expect to attract someone in your life if you're not even loving, loving yourself? Now, that's not, I don't mean take, take an ego trip. I just mean believing in who you are. And again, so here's an exercise. Write down on a sheet of paper the things that you love about yourself. It can be your smile. It can be how you greet people in the morning. Whatever they are, just write them down. Nothing is too small. The second thing, love people. Nobody wants to be around a grouch. Someone who's like, I don't want to be around people. I don't like, I don't like how they act. Love people. Love your fellow man or your fellow woman. <laughs> write down again some things that you love about people. I like the way they open up my heart. I like the way they make me laugh. Whatever it is, write down a few sentiments about what you love about your fellow man. And finally, love life. That's right, you gotta love life. If you wake up every morning with a, oh gosh, what's going to happen today mental attitude, 
it's going to affect everything else you got going on, including romantic interest. So simply identify the things about life that you enjoy, the things about life that bring you joy. Just write them down. So that's, you got to do that prep work, that basic prep work, things you love about yourself, things you love about people, and the third thing, things you love about life. Now there's a couple of little add-on rules here too. A lot of people, and you know, I can be I can be guilty of it as well. A lot of people love the idea of being in love. Kind of, you know, gives you butterflies, makes you feel good. But the the key point with that is allow love to be fluid. Allow it to flow gently, beautifully, organically instead of being forced. You can't force love. It's just not going to happen. So allow love to be fluid. And also remember too that yes, in order for new romance or new love interest to come into your life, some, some things may require being dissolved. And that could be a rotten relationship that's currently in your life that's not working out or it could be bad energy that you're still harboring for whatever reason. Those are prime examples of things that should be eliminated or dissolved in order for new, positive, healthy, loving energy to come into your life. So as we approach Valentine's Day, I want to raise a glass. Raise a glass and let's send our best wishes to all of us, all of us who believe in love, to the lovers out there, I salute you. Now, I know we just talked about love from a romantic point of view, but love isn't just about romance. Love is something that is universal. Love is what makes life a picnic. Think about it. What brings you joy? What's the true core of bringing you joy? It's love. And love influences everything in your life, whether you realize it or not. Now, just because I say life's a picnic, or love makes life a picnic, doesn't mean that, yes, occasionally it will rain, or occasionally ants show up for the picnic. But there's so much beauty with love, and there's so much beauty in life that a picnic, despite the rain or despite the ants that show up, it's all worth it. It's all worth the ride. So in today's episode of Southern Soul, and in, in, in this particular segment, which I call the Little Red Wagon segment, you know, you think about it, the Little Red Wagon was probably your first toy when you are a kid. You put all your dreams, you put all your aspirations, you put the things that you want to experience in your little red wagon to include love and you pull it around with you your entire life. It's always there, never leaves your side. So in today's episode of Southern Soul and in this little red wagon segment, what I'd like for each of us to do in honor of love is to write down th three things, three things that you can bring to the table that will help bring love to the forefront everywhere. Nothing is too small, but just make sure the three things that you identify to put in your little red wagon as it relates to love, just make sure they're attainable. Make sure they're honest, make sure they're real. Make sure that you can deliver the goods because it's all about activating it and experiencing it and most importantly, sharing it. Share the love. I hope you really enjoyed this special episode of Southern Soul. Like I said, we called it Love is All Around. Thank you for joining us, and until next time, keep rolling.